Queensland Premier Rugby is back for its most eagerly awaited season in history. Romanian international Luke Samoa has arrived at the nest with a host of young talent under his wing. There's potential for Chipsy Wood. Can they recapture the glory days of old? East have got the flair, the firepower and the ferocity. This man, Seru Uru, will haunt the dreams of club. Aiden in the backside here from the Tigers as they swing it out. He's got a few extra metres of pills. Finds the spice out wide and it's a try time there. Head coach Carl Marshall is back at Sylvan Road and he's the top dog at the kennel. The doggies missed finals by just one point last year and they're here to play. Don't look away from this young team. They can make something from nothing. And one off the run. Carter Gordon has sniffed it. The Chiefs defender and Carter Gordon. It's been a tough few years for the Eagles. But don't you dare tell Chapo that they're not in the fight. Here we go now, Chapman. Splits it wide open, goes himself and gets the try. Nick Chapman, take a bow. It's a new season, and the men from Hugh Courtney Oval have a point to prove. Intro, Dallin. With Cody Blackhurst up front, the Eagles are ready to soar. Back to Arpo, to Arpo, goes for it, to Arpo. And then I'll say, yeah, once they all kick off, I'll go, all right, now let's kick it over to the match of the round where Martin Lindy is going to take through all the action. Because then from there, we'll do it, yeah, yeah, because I thought we'll do a couple minutes there and we'll get the Chiefs have won the 2018 Hospital And then from there, I'll go, now let's have a look at our other somewhat match of the round. The Gallopers have been in destructive form in recent years. And boy, do the glue factory get stuck in. Sunnybank are out to restore some pride and will be breathing fire in 2020. With Tom Lucas at the wheel, good luck keeping up once these guys get on a roll. They need no introduction. Just five points kept brothers from the cup last year and don't believe that they've put it behind them. Matho will have the brethren firing in 2020. Go straight through and he finds Luke. Luke gets it back in field and that's a ripper of a pass from the youngster. The Bull Sharks are circling. There'll be no easy trips down the M1 if Dan Boardman has anything to do with it. Side to go down this near touch line. Back to down, back in field. Dan Boardman goes through untouched. Try time. In at the death here. Over the Dragons. Strikes it. Switched third. Burying the Dragons. Arguably the team of the decade. This cup has spent more time at Stud to Heavy than any other club. A white Cairns gets smacked by Keats. Go back in field, five South Leash, Cliffy Seto. He knows won't let these young students give it up without a fight. Working towards post, Tate McDermott goes straight through. McDermott swings it back to Campbell and he bellies it. The Hospital Challenge Cup is club rugby at its best, and it starts now. G'day folks, my name's Jay Bor Staunton and welcome to QPR Clubhouse where we're going to be bringing you all the action from the final four matches of the All Sports Physiotherapy Hospital Challenge Cup. We've got plenty of footy action coming at you today, but before we get into that, I've got to introduce my co-host, the best friend in the whole entire world, the 100-game <laughs> superstar from the Brothers Rugby Club, Dale Murphy. Dale, how you doing, brother? Mate, I am that excited. Absolutely crack a day of rugby here. We've got so many get matches in and decide this final series. I'm absolutely stoked to be here. I am honestly tingling. Like <laughs> I've got goosebumps, and I am so, so excited because we've got so much footy to keep our eye on. We're going to be bringing all all the 
uh, action from all four matches. We're going to be going back and forth, bringing your replays and keeping an eye on what we've got, which is the live ladder, which you can see behind me. So this ladder is actually going to be updating in real time. So anytime a team pulls ahead, anytime a team goes behind, that ladder is going to update. We're going to keep an eye on all four matches. But in particular, it's those two right there at the top, brothers and East. Bond versus Uni. Now, Dow, obviously, they're the two big matches we've got to keep an eye on because that is one versus five and two versus three. So whatever happens in those two matches is going to dictate who goes to Ballymore na next weekend. Exactly right. And isn't it exciting? You've got two teams, or, or specifically one team who's currently sitting outside the four who can jump into the four, and a team in fourth who can potentially jump all the way up into second. And you've got to be sitting there with bated breath if you're a Jeep supporter because we know... They've got the buy this weekend. They're sitting pretty well there in third spot, but anything can happen in particular. You know, if Bond somehow gets the job done against a red-hot uni side, if Brothers at home, which is so hard to beat, get the, uh, get the job done against East, you never know what could happen. So they could be out, and all they're doing is just sitting on the pine at home. That's, that's, exactly that's right. scary stuff for them. I was just at the Breakfast Creek, mate, went for a feed before I came here. I saw Dan Gorman and John Ellis down there. They <laughs> looked very, very nervous in the public bar. They're having a few skewies to settle the nerds. Well, mate, if brothers and Bond get up, I'd hate to be anywhere near them near the Spanish Garden, <laughs> that's for sure, because they're two blokes you wouldn't want to run into in a, in a dark alley. But you can see there at the top right on our quad screen, screen sorry, Bond and University have already kicked off. Bond are wearing their yellow jersey today. So just for you guys sitting at home, you'll see that the heavies are in their normal red heavies outfit and Bond in the yellow. We can see at Crosby Park there, the Tigers taking to the field to go toe-to-toe -to -toe in our match of the round against the Brethren. And then down on the bottom right, we've still got big matches in store. Norths versus Sunnybank. Two sides that haven't had the seasons they would have wanted, but they will be absolutely fighting for a win this over. Yeah, it certainly will be, I think, for all four of those teams. It's their last game of the year. They want to finish on a high, but it's also a bit of bragging when I see it run over that, that local side. So it's very, very exciting. North versus sunny back, and then we've got West versus South. The West versus South one for mine, obviously being a doggy, it, it means a lot to me. But also just the fact that this is somewhat of a rebuilding stage for the doggies as well as, in particular, the Magpies. If the Magpies can pick up a second win, that'll be massive for them. But if the doggies can go up to, say, about 21 points or 20-odd points in the ladder. That shows that they're on the way. Yeah, certainly, absolutely. Every, every game I think this year they've played, you know, bar one or two, West have been in a position to win the game. And if they can come away with a win in this last game, it really justifies that decision you know, with a few changes they made at the start of the year. And we can see at the top left there, they're just having a moment, silent, uh, silence in the main game, brothers versus East. But at the top right, you can see... University of Queensland have already picked up a five-pointer against Bond. We'll try to bring that screen up real quick just so we can run through it because that is the start that the heavies definitely would have wanted. Yeah, it certainly was. It's always a tough trip going down to Bond. You know, getting down there with a bus, but they want to start strong and they want to finish strong. They really want to kind of nullify this excellent Bond University team this year. And there was actually a couple changes. It looks like the, uh, the heavies are actually resting a few players. They've got Jas Jasper Mellish starting at 10. They've got Angus Scott Young going to 6 and Pat Morrie resting up. So they're obviously looking towards finals. Yeah, they certainly are. Like, and Mick Heenan's obviously no slouch in their coaching ranks. He's won four or five premierships in the last 10 years. And the depth they've got there is always very, very impressive. And it looked like there it's just Sam Edwards, 3GH, the third grade hooker going in in the corner there. So he's got the Guernsey. <laughs> Late on in the season here, but he'll be putting his hand up to try to be on that bench for Hino going into finals in Ballymore next weekend. And already down on that bottom left, looks like Souths are only moments away from potentially picking up the first five-pointer of the day over the doggies that we actually saw in the reserve grades game. Unfortunately for me, being a doggy, the doggies needed to come away with a bonus point win to leapfrog East into second on the ladder. And South nab themselves not only a draw, but a spot in the finals as a result. So they'll be right up for it. Surely the Premier Grade guys will want to get it done. Yeah, absolutely. Lead, a little being led there in that reserve grade tied by Lindsay Ward. Obviously, he set the standard there for the rest of the day for that South pack. You know what I mean? And in that Premier Grade side as well, they'll be looking to jump off to an excellent start and come away with some points there. Now we'll go over to our main game of the day, the match of the round with East travelling to Crosby Park to take on the Brethren. And we'll leave you with Martin Lippiet. Will take you through all the action. Starting on us, and uh, now they can compensate for some of the extra fours they got. But we are under a, we are underway. Round eleven, final competition round. Brothers hosting Easts here at Crosby Road. Everything on the line for these two teams. Off the back, Tarabay fires it through. 
brothers. Uh, Mitch, they're in a bit of a bit of a different colours trip today. Yeah, mate, it's uh, it's Ladies' Day out here today. It was a bit of a bit of a funny one, obviously, with the conditions we've been in. I think they had about three weeks lead into plan it, but uh, but they've managed to get the jerseys. Very uh, very nice, pink and flowery. Suits a few of the boys uh, better than I thought, actually. Tarabay looking very at home in that. There's the line out. We scooped up. Smith takes it up, manages to bump off one now. The Tigers looking to charge their way through out the back. Pills fires it through. Strong running from the Tigers in close succession. Our referee today is none other than Nick Berry, which is exciting. Moen picks and goes. Pills is at the back looking for an option. Milosevic hovers over him, out the back, Toa fires it through once more, pivoting from Kennedy, really good, he's dropped that ball, great tackle up front there. It was Billy Bully right up in his grill. Yeah, Billy Bully taking a really good uh, really good option there to come in and jam, there was a bit of a bit of uh, time with, with the ball in the air, so he's come in, he's jammed it, and uh, he's cut that off. Alrighty, so while there's a bit of a break in play there in our match of the round, we're going to take you through the road to Ballymore, in particular starting with the Brethren, so... Essentially, they're in a very good position. They can either win by any margin, claim any two lows, uh, claim two losing bonus points, and if Bond lose and also don't get any bonus points, they go through, and they can even claim the minor premiership with a bonus point win and uni losing. So we could go through this all day, <laughs> but essentially what that shows is that, look, brothers win, they're good as goal, but they are still in a good position even if they don't pick up the butter confection today. Yeah, certainly, but I think they can control their destiny here today by, by just by, by just beating East. It's, it's pretty simple. It, it, it's plain and simple there for them. You win the game, you make your way into the finals. And they've actually got some very big inclusions. Obviously, we know Harry Hooper's back, Ryan Smith's back, Lawson Crichton. Like they're absolutely massive inclusions there to be able to take into the, not only the final round of the season but potentially finals. Yeah, certainly, and I think those three inclusions, all guys who've been a part of that, you know, red squad throughout the Super AU, specifically Ryan Smith and Lawson Crichton, it's like to think that their skill level has increased and improved during that period. So they're going to be a really big in for these guys today. Well, we saw uh, Sam Wallace last week absolutely chop up, and he was in the same boat as what those guys were as well. So you can only expect the same. But now it's for East. Again, East we know are sitting very pretty. They're really, they're such a great side, but they have had a few games where they have been caught off guard a little bit. But essentially, they win, they're good. They avoid losing by more than 21 points, they're good. Bond lose to Uni, they're sweet. They can even claim, claim again, the minor premiership if Uni go down. So, look, there's so much on offer today. But, again, look, for Brothers and East, there's so much riding on it because there is a one and two spot. For anybody playing at home, there is the major semi-final for one and two. They get a second bite of the cherry, whereas three and four play for a minor semi-final. And if they lose, they go straight out. So there is a lot riding on that one and two spot now. Yeah, it certainly is. Obviously, you want to be in those top two. It gives you the second bite of the cherry, but also... If, say, Bond lose and don't make it through the semi-finals, you've got an absolutely red-hot side at Jeeps with the likes of, you know, J.P. Smith, Ruan Smith, Twain Atualima, you know, Bryce Hegarty, all to come back into that side. So it's going to be a tough team to play going through that first semi-final. They're just players coming back. We saw last week against Bond. I called it. I said Jeeps aren't playing finals footy this year because they hadn't been as dominant as they had been. Last week against Bond, they played the type of footy that everyone was picking they were going to play this year. Their set piece decimated <laughs> Bond. They absolutely slaughtered them. And then their back line, the ferocity with which guys like Atuna Issa and co. run that pill back is absolutely mental. And they absolutely strangled them. So that's the sort of thing they can do. And that's the sort of thing that coming into finals, plus those four Reds coming back, is going to be absolutely massive. Oh, absolutely. It's an incredible side. As you said, Like they've got a lot of recruits this year. They've been playing some exceptional footy. In these last couple of games they played, they probably forced a few errors there early on, but they're hitting their straps at the right time. And we can see here, East obviously just picking up a three-pointer there. A penalty goal nice and early, but we're going to kick it over now to what is essentially our second match of the round, and it is Bond University against the Red Heavies down on the Gold Coast. And we'll just leave you with this one real quick, just to get a feel for the game.
righty, folks. So we're going to take you back to the kennel now where we actually missed. No, no, sorry. Out to Hugh Courtney Oval where we actually missed a try here from the Eagles. And it was a great interchange of hands here getting up over that 22. And then, as you can imagine, it was just tough going all the way through the 22. But they pick up that first five-pointer of the day. And we've seen, Dallin, that... Sunnybank have struggled to score points later on in the game, so going down early is not great. And in particular, same goes for the Doggies. They've struggled in the back end of games and they've already gone down to a five-pointer there to the Magpies. So not the start that both sides would have wanted. No, absolutely not. I think both sides obviously would like to start early, but with North getting some points there and South getting the points early, it's great to see them kind of put their front foot forward and start to put a bit of pressure on, on these other sides. Now, I was actually picking out of the kennel. The Doggies were absolutely smashed. Uh, so we saw last week their set piece is red hot, but they've had a few changes. Effie Marf, who's actually starting for them today in, st in place of uh, the Bobcat, big Bronson Fotuali. So they've got red hot talent across the board, but 5 0 down, I can tell you right now, Car Marshall will not be too chuffed with that. But we'll go back to our main game, the match of the round there, Brothers versus East, and it looks like the Brethren looking to go tit for tat and picking up. An opening penalty to Sol match it with the Tigers. Right hand side. Post. Moen. Moen not his strength, but he's got it no, out. He's, he's hit it pretty straight and true, I have to say. <laughs> Is that where he was aiming? He got it out. <laughs> he got it out. He did better than the Honey Badger. <laughs> yeah, as for James O'Connor for the Reds. That's right. Right, we're, to, we're talking old James O'Connor. <laughs> sorry. Got to back our boy in. Wallabies gets New Zealand for the Bledisloe tomorrow. How exciting. Good. That's exciting. Harry Wilson making his debut. Fesler misses that one. Uru just stands up and plays, gets it, but it's come back their way. Now Hooper. Hooper goes through. He's tackled now, boys. Release. Thank you. Tarabay. Goes to the right, finds Kappa, who gets hit hard by Uru. Tarabay keeps recycling it, right-hand side. Crichton, that's Lawson, takes that one. Here's Wood. East. Committing bodies to these ones. Cyflue flicks it out. Maloney gets a throw underneath, back through to James. Perez fires it through Perez. He's in the new... Bit of headgear this week. Oh, he's washed it. James, <laughs> out the back. Crichton gets the cut out wide. Through to Nathan Carroll, but even you've got to admit that one wasn't flat. I think that was a very flat pass. Was that Paddy James <laughs> finding uh, Nathan Carroll? Curvature of the earth kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah there's yeah. a yeah, flat earth society, mate. Flat yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> scrum time. And I have to say... Uh, the silky touch here. Alrighty, so entertaining stuff there. We saw Harry Hooper throw a little flick pass, but that man in particular caught that forward pass. Nate Carroll, Dal, he's come through the EDP. He's an absolute gun. He's hit the ground running coming into Premier grade just this year. Seven games, seven tries, five line breaks, and 11 defenders beaten. This kid is an absolute superstar in the making. Yeah, he certainly is. He's had an excellent season since he's moved into this Premier grade side. As you can see, there, the line breaks, but I think the biggest one is his defenders beat him. Not only is he scoring tries, but he's setting tries up for those people around him. He's got an excellent set of hands on him. He's quick, he's physical, he's not the biggest bloke on the field, but he's certainly added another dimension to this brother's attack since he's coming to the side. But he's typically a fullback, isn't he, I've, I've heard. So he's got that short kicking game, which really comes in handy. So a player that's playing technically out of position, finding his feet on the wing there is absolutely massive. So you can show, see that he's got that finishing prowess, but on top of that as well, he, he's a very good game manager. Yeah, he certainly is. He's adding another dimension to the attack, as we said before, but he's also got that ability to link with other players. He's become a real link man off his wing. He goes looking for work, and he brings another adjustment to this back line. Now, we've just gotten word as well that there's been another try to the Magpies at the Kennel. So we'll queue up that replay, and we'll bring you that action from the Kennel as well. But in the meantime... Oh, no, here we go. It looks like it was most Rowey tried to get back from a kick. I don't know what's happened here, but he's just lost the pill in contact. And then held up over. So, too easy in the end there. Number 14, I believe that is just Seb Henna has gone straight over. Only making his starting debut last week. But we'll go back to our main game now, the match of the round. Brothers versus East. And it looks like Brothers are hammering that East Tigers try line. Penalty advantage still on their side. Cyphoy hits it out. Finds Crichton, who manages to get an unbelievable offload to Bully. Bully shrugs off still one, going. still going forward. Tarabay 
fires it through. Here's Nielsen. Serial pilferer for this competition. Tarabay shows, goes, nearly fools <laughs> the old salt in Ben Moen. Saifalu backdoors it through. James throws about three dummies. Gets the offload through to Smith. Smith. Pinched He's by good. No. Back to the original advantage. I think Noah Nielsen's hurt himself hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. in that run previously. Well, Noah Nielsen, we've seen him. He's had strapping on that knee every single week and it looked like he went down a little bit awkwardly on it. Take from someone who's just found out this week he has no ACL in his left leg and he hasn't for five weeks. Noah Nielsen? No, me. <laughs> oh, yourself. Jeez. I was like, oh. Yeah, no. No, me. for five weeks. What did you do five weeks ago? Dodgeball. Dodgeball. Sudden death. Dodge. Yeah, yeah. dodge and wrenches. But and then an offside, so we had two there. All really? Right. So we're going to leave our main game now because we've just gotten word that there's been two tries scored. In particular, the Sunnybank Dragons picking up their first five-pointer of the day going down that far touch line there against the Eagles. And it was just big Dave Fayo. Too big, too strong. He's an absolute unit. And then the other one here, Bond University picking up their first five-pointer of the day. And they've got a very big forward pack. Zane Nongal has obviously come back. And clearly they're just looking to try to work the students who notoriously don't necessarily always have the biggest forward pack. No, certainly right. And as we've talked about before, Jay Boy, this year the UQ pack has really struggled from a set-piece perspective, whether it's been scrum or line at. So you'd think today Bond University would look to go pretty hard at them. And we'll go to our live ladder now. So as it stands, it still remains the same. 34 points to UQ, 33 for East. Jeeps 29, as we know, having the buy then 28, 28, two bonds. So, I mean, it's all tight going at the moment, only about 10 to 15 minutes in for each and every game. But this just shows how tight it is, Darren. I mean, we've got a competition that could potentially have two sides playing with an almost losing record in Jeeps and Brothers if it remains the same. Because, I, I mean, I picked it. I, I said there's surely there's no side that can lose three games this year and play finals, and we could potentially have two of them. Yeah, exactly right. It just shows you how close this competition is. It's been exciting here. So obviously it's almost first past the post at the end of these finals. You've got eight games that we've come through now, and it's an exciting finish to the season. Oh, mate, this is absolutely awesome. I mean, a shortened season, but nonetheless, it's been very, very exciting. can only imagine what Ballymore is going to look like next week. Now we're going to kick it over to the kennel where the Doggies have picked up their first five-pointer of the day. And a little ball back inside, Bat Ritchie finds JMS, John Martin Stewart. This kid himself, I mean, I'm told so, he's come through the Force Academy, he's come over, mate, he is ripped like Rambo, <laughs> and he is just an absolute menace on the ball. So surprising to see early on, they've got Bart Ritchie having come on, and JMS has come on as well. So maybe some tactical changes, maybe some injuries, we're not too sure. We'll try to get some intel on that now, but... I mean, South still looking really good with that turnover now. Only about 30-odd metres out from the Doggies line, looking to pick up their third try of the game in under 20-odd minutes. Now, while we're waiting, we'll go back over to our main game of the day, the match of the round, and we'll let Martin Lippi at take the call for you there. It's three points to nil in favour of the Tigers. They've repelled the brothers' attack, and now they're working their way out of their own 22. Savelio's there, and a penalty going against him. Such, a, uh, such an awkward rule, that one. Not me, you can't land on someone while they're on the ground. Well, even you'd have to admit, in the last four or five years, we've seen such a huge change in direction for rules based on player safety. You know, the, the air contact is a big one. You know, really... Anything on or above the shoulder is El now... Elbow, you can't lead with elbows or you get in trouble, it's all... Hey, at least we're not rugby league. Yeah, yeah. Look, it's all a bit... What do you, what do, you do? It's awkward. Well, it's just... It's let, the right call. It's, it's the right it's call. It's let the pressure off um, that had been built up by brothers. So now it'll fall to... Reese Van Neck beating the line just inside halfway. They got back at Schneider... Calling the beaver around Tigerland. Toa! It's been falconed off Michael Wood. Not sure if he even felt it, but that's what's come. That's what's There's a lot of forehead there to hit. <laughs> now, Pills at the get back. On, get out. Wearing a bit of pressure, but he managed to get the box in. Kennedy striding through along with the chippy Jack Frampton, but that's a huge take from Nathan Carroll under pressure. 
Now, Brothers inside their own 40. James floats one out to Crichton. Hudson Crichton goes one-on-one with Toa, but the man back from Japan, from the Honda Heat, makes a really good tackle. Tarabay on the left. They backdoor it through. Cypheloy. Wow! And Uru gives his fellow Reds teammate Lawson Crichton a massive seatbelt tackle. <laughs> Very unfortunate for height difference here for... Uh... Yeah, but what point is that, is, what point is that not a valid excuse for a tall guy playing rugby in a semi-professional one? Uru we being about a foot taller than Lawson, he didn't even have to, he didn't even have to <laughs> drop his arms. But uh, high tackle's the call. A lot of penalties. A lot of penalties yeah. for the opening 15 minutes of play. For, for, for the team that usually... Top, top tier team. Usually concedes the least. East. Cyphaloy for the kick, looking for touch. Interesting, right out in front, didn't want to take the kick. Take the shot. Maybe a lot of confidence in forward. Discipline down here. As we just heard, referee Nick Berry warn East of their discipline. They've already had plenty of penalties here in the 22. Could be uh, someone could be seeing a card if there's a few more. And they hit Perez clean. Cyphaloy through. James straightens up. He's met by a harsh Tiger defensive line. Kappa. He's got Wood to help him take out Schmidt. Cyphaloy on the right fires it through. Strong running from Brothers as they enter the 22. Hoopit burrows down. Good to see Harry Hoopit back, obviously from that bad neck injury that he had last year. Cyphaloy, flat ball to Kappa. Yeah, thank you. Inside ball, back to Hudson Crichton, who gets a couple of metres across the advantage line. Flat ball, James. Uru looking to try and find a turnover, but he just couldn't keep on his feet. His big T-bone Maloney. Tarabe through Wood, waiting at first receiver. Moens hunting for the turnover. Long limbs, Ben Moens in deep, but he can't quite get there. Hoop it, shows and goes. Lovely shimmy and a tackle bus from the front rower. Tarabe over to the right. Brighton backed up by Bully. Oh, and the fumble from Wood. It's been cleaned up by Pills. Pills gets the offload through. They've had a Simpson on the left-hand side. It's pulling away. Gets an offload back to Pills. Who throws a kick in. Straight. Caught by Tarabay. Hands Isaac Tarabay. He's picked it up out of the air. Ball is back in possession. Brothers after an ugly little stint. Cyphaloy. Floats it out wide. Finds Crichton who sends it out once more to... Oh, Carroll who throws it back into the field of play. Tigers are there and Frampton has darted in and got it. So the Tigers turn it over on halfway. The first real touch in about five minutes. Francis is casually pulling that one out, finds Toa. Back door to Pills. Pills opts to go himself. Tigers without a half back. And a knock on at the back. This is a really interesting game here, Miss. Now, we've seen some very frenetic stuff there at Crosby Park. Brothers and East going back and forth. And in the meantime, we've seen plenty of highlights across all four games. So first up, the Dragons have picked up their second five-pointer of the day. And it was Tommy Lucas just sneaking in on that far corner there. He's been awesome all year. And then down on the GC, the students from the Goldie, Bond University, picking themselves up their second five-pointer and another rolling more you can see big Angus Blythe is fizzing for that one and then this one out of nowhere Roman Fassad <laughs> puts that one on the toe and drills it off the crossbar and then the Norths bounce right back and pick themselves up a five pointer of their own through their skipper Cody Blackhurst so plenty of action across all four games Dallin but I mean a drop goal not something you typically see when it's 12-7 uh, only 20 odd minutes in no, absolutely not. But I think it's a you know a credit to the defence over that side. But also, I think it's when the points are available, a lot of these teams want to be able to take it. They want to start to build some scoreboard pressure. And if they're available and you've got the advantage, why not take them? And then the battle of the students down on the Goldie there. We've seen two tries now for Bond and both of them off rolling malls. So we saw last week against Chiefs, we said it before, they got absolutely munted. They just got decimated at their set piece, but they were without guys like Lachlan Connors, 
Uh, you know, Luke Papworth having to go into the second row and Wilson Blythe only having his starting debut. No Dylan Rowe, no Connor Pritchard, whereas this week they've got Declan Din and Dylan Rowe, Jake Upfield and the Blythe brothers and Zane Nongor in their front row. That right there is an absolutely massive forward pack and a forward pack that could do some serious damage and clearly they're backing it in. Two, two tries off two rolling walls. Yeah, they certainly are. They've obviously really put a, put a foot down and trying to attack that set piece of the UQ right there today and they've come away with some chocolates on both occasions. Now, the big inclusion for mine has to be Dylan Rowe. He was one of the best players in the competition before he got injured for a few weeks there. He's absolutely awesome. Typically plays six, but he's moved into seven there because Jake Apfield, who started in second row for the year, has moved to six. But their forward pack is just so mobile. They've got such a great... They're almost like a seven team. They play with so much width. Their forwards tend to step into first receiver a lot and throw some really good pill to try to get as much width as possible. And we've seen... Bond this year, I would love to know their stats for how many points they've scored from inside their own half because they score plenty of points coming their way out of their own red zone. Yeah, you're 100% correct. I think what we talked about before is that mobility of that forward pack really complements this exciting back line that they've got. You know, you've got Joey Fiddick, you've got a whole heap of stars in that back line that really love to run the other teams around the park and this forward pack they've got are absolutely exceptional. Now we'll go out to the kennel there. We can see the doggies attacking, getting deep inside the souths. Red zone there, but unfortunately bundled into touch. It looks like that was Callum Hicks, former brothers, outside back, having moved over a couple of seasons ago to the kennel. But this will be a big throw here for Theo Fury. Theo Fury, I mean, in a young side, he is such an experienced head for such what is an inexperienced side in the Magpies. Yes, certainly is. He's obviously very, very hard working. He gets out there, but he's a natural leader. He's probably the one in that forward pack that's leading this forward pack around the park. He's been exceptional in his first year at Premier Grade, and obviously leading into next year, he's going to be really, really excited. And he's the sort of guy you can definitely build your club around. And out there at Chipsy Wood, they are in rebuilding, but they're looking very good for a very prosperous few years if they can keep some of these blokes in the mixer. And here goes Cooper Whiteside. See you later. Goes straight through, picking up a five-pointer. That is absolutely red hot there from Cooper Whiteside. We picked that one up live on the stream, and he has been fantastic this season. Carter Gordon's back today, but, I mean, he had to step up for that fly half roll. Back and full back now, and he's an absolute team. Yeah, he certainly is. Talk about, you know, building building a team around. I think Cooper Whiteside's one of those guys who, who you really can. He's been excellent for you guys this year, whether it's been at 15 or 10. He's been a real centrepiece of this, this west side. And we saw last year he had guys like, well, current, what, starting Wallaby outside centre, Hunter Paisami, Zachy Henry, Carter Gordon now with the Rebels, Mo Sorovi, uh, Liam Dillon, who's gone down to Bond. So he lost pretty much all of his spine, and he's had to just take so much of the workload there at the kennel this season. And he started a bit slow, but he's worked into it, and he's been absolutely fantastic. Now, speaking of fantastic, down there in the Goldie, Dillon Rowe taking that hit up there and getting absolutely lit up from the outside in by Connor Vest. And it looks like Bond have got all the running in their legs early on in this match. They're making the heavies really work for this one. Yeah, they certainly have, and that's what we would expect, I reckon. There's so much up to grabs for that Bond University side. Their first finals appearance. God, I want them to play finals. Don't we so all? Bad. Don't we all? If they do me dirty, they <laughs> this year. that's three years in a row where I've backed them in, and they're going to make me look like an absolute goose. I can do that myself, thank you very much. Now, out to Hugh Courtney, we've got the Dragons. And the Eagles, 14 points apiece. 25 odd minutes in. The Dragons have a penalty five metres out. Now down on the Goldie, Maxi Dowd goes over in the corner. They are having an absolute field day early on, are the students from the GC. And Max Dowd, he's one, he's one bloke that stood up. No Joey Fiddock for a lot of the season, obviously, in the Reds bubble. He's gotten his chance there at fullback. Obviously, Joey Fiddick, I mean, he's been undeniable over the last two weeks, so he's earned back that 15 jersey, but Max Dow made it a hell of a fight for him to do so. He certainly has, but you see here, Joey Fiddick, the man, just getting the ball out in front, putting a bit of footwork on, straight through, oh. and setting this man up here, as you said, Maxie Dowd, he's been very, very impressive this year, and the boys down at the Gold Coast, really applying some pressure to this leaderboard. No mean feat there. Max Dowd getting around. Mac really, we've seen him, obviously, the 18-year-old superstar out of Downlands. 
coming into the Premier Grade fold this year and absolutely chopping up. So Maxi Dow's done well to skin him on the outside, but it was that man, Joey Fiddle, getting through, getting the hands free and absolutely putting it on a platter there for Max Dowd. Now, we'll go back to our match of the round and we'll leave you with Marty Lippiard. He'll take you through all the action. That one will hurt his average a little bit. Now, here's Van Neck getting it off the Scrappy Brothers line out, out the back. A lot of players out there jostling for Nick Berry's attention. Uru manages to get that one as the second receiver. Thank you, 20. Toa offloads it out the back to Frampton, who gets a great offload. That is huge from Landon oh. Hayes through to Shane Kennedy. But Kennedy will leave the field of play. And in any other game this year, that probably would have been an easy try for Shane Kennedy. But this brother's defense is switched on. Met by, uh, met by hard man Mr. Wood out there and some good cover defense, but some silky skills there from East. A little out the back play and then a, uh, and then a flick. But um, yeah, luckily Michael Wood dragging, uh, dragging this into touch. Brothers running the five-man line out inside their own 22. Fezla. Bit of confusion. And it's going to get nabbed up the front by Schneider. Line-out synergy for both sides has been a little frantic today. Here's Van Neck, backed up by Gunn and Afiata. Uru. Picking and going. The Tigers towards the line. Schneider gets taken back as Fezla takes the space. There's the run from Francis. Now to the right. Uru sizes up. Uru! Just short. They're going to quickly look. Wonderful step from Kennedy. And that was an ankle breaker to say the least. And he gets the first try of the match. East in the lead. Eight points to nil over Brothers. As, we, as you were saying with those stats before, Marty, not, not much needed for them. Hey, they were down here. It didn't take them long. There wasn't many passes. There wasn't many phases. But when they're, uh, you know, when they're in position, geez, they're dangerous. And they've come across uh, come across to the butchery corner and uh, got, one, got one over the line. Shane Kennedy gets his fifth for the season. And that, that drop pivot from Kennedy at the back end there, that was the stuff of nightmares for ankles and knees. That was a, a really... Fast and furious turn. Yeah, you don't want to be one on one. Good stuff there. The Burdick and Kane Toad picking up a little bit of meat there at Crosby Park. But now we're going to go to the live ladder. And with that, obviously there's still plenty of footy left to be played. But if the scores remain the same, Bond have gone up to 30 points. Brothers ducked out of that top four. But East going up to the top of the ladder. Look, not too much there in by way of uh, East and Uni. Minor Premiership is good. But you still get a second bite of the cherry for University. But Bond going into third. If they, if it remains the way it is, that's three versus four, and that's Bond, who two weeks ago, a week ago, got absolutely smashed by Chiefs. So they will be going toe to toe in a do or die fight against the side that absolutely months them only a week or so ago. Yeah, they certainly will, and it'll be an interesting game. Obviously, them jumping over, you know, uh, the brothers' side currently and, and moving into third position. It's really going to be an interesting game. Set piece will play a large part of that game, as we saw last week. But we saw with that set piece, even without that in their game, Bond University still scored something like 28 points in that game alone. Yeah, I mean, they had literally zero front foot ball, essentially. Their scrum was going backwards. Their line-out wasn't great. Yet they were still able to nab three or four tries against a side that credit their defence very heavily. But you can see here... Out at Hugh Courtney, we've got the Sunnybank Dragons picking themselves up a penalty try. So, for those that don't know, obviously, the Dragons, their forward pack is absolutely massive, and they have been going hell for leather, hammer and tongs for the better part of about six or seven minutes now. Penalty after penalty, and it looks like the referees just said enough. So, huge five-pointer there for the Dragons. And speaking of... Out at the kennel as well, it looks like Bombay Benji. Shay Lala might have picked up <laughs> a little bit of meat himself. So it looks like a couple of sides are really starting to hit their straps in. This final round of the All Sports Physiotherapy Hospital Challenge Cup. And we'll just queue up a replay here. And it looks like it was actually Cooper Whiteside picking himself up. A second five-pointer of the day. 
So here it is, the Sunnybank Dragons, all too easy, rolling up. I mean, they were just chewing up metres with ease there. And the referee says, no dice, try time, penalty try. And that is just desserts for a big Sunnybank forward pack. And then right here, Ilay Issa, Droa Sese goes straight through, gets that offload away, and Cooper Whiteside again. The beneficiary of some great work there from his inside back. So exciting stuff all around, Dallin. And it looks like the Doggies and maybe the Sunnybank Dragons starting to get a little bit of uh, their tail up. Yeah, they certainly are. I think we look across all games. It, it, it's Bond, it's Sunnybank, and it's West now starting to get some ascendancy, as you said. But I'd just like to touch on that draw assessor. I think he's a big inclusion for you guys over at West. He's another one of a long line of Fijians who've come across, positioned themselves at West, and are moving through into that super rugby pathway. I mean, speaking of the devil, Filippo Dalgunu has just been named on the sting for the Wallabies tomorrow, and he came down to the kennel as somewhat of a no-name no, no name as of a couple of years ago. Absolutely lit it up, and ever since he's gone to bigger and better things, and he's going to be sitting on the sting for the Wallabies in Wellington in Gledeslow 1 tomorrow, which is absolutely massive. And it looks like <laughs> our match of the round up there. <laughs> Big T-Bow Maloney and uh, Reese Van Nonek just getting a bit niggly between the two tight head props. But how's this? Chodo Baggins just seagulling on the wing, doing what Chodo does well. But he put that one down. <laughs> Feisty little reception there now. We're going to go through a replay down on the Gold Coast of this UQ try. And again, all too easy, it seems. Just in midfield there. Mac Greeley this time. We saw Sam Edwards going over. Early on, and now it's the other winger, Mac, really picking himself up a little bit of meat. Now let's let's kick it over to our match of the round as we see Isaac Tarabay, the brothers' halfback, just feeding the ball into the scrum inside their own 22. So brothers having to work their way out of their own red zone. My brother's still inside the 22, finds Perez off the second phase. Smith, once again, East committing no players to the breakdown, leaving every possible player for defence. Kennedy will take the exit. Works it across to Toa. Two crosses near to the opposite 15 now. Hayes gives it through Taikato Simpson, who very... Look forward from here. <laughs> that one. Very swiftly gives it off to Schmidt. They're keeping this one alive. Uru probably puts his hands onto something that wasn't destined for him. Now Milosevic straightens up through the middle, and that's a thundering run from the back row. Still in, still in, guys. A loopy one to Asiato, straightens up hard into Fesler and Maloney. Get up. Pills. Goes himself for Tarabay, takes him. Ball lost forward, great. Work from the halfbacks now. Carroll, Carroll slicing them up left, right, and center. Throws it onto the right foot. Here goes the grubber. Hudson didn't have enough speed to get there. Really enterprising play from Brothers, turning it on its head. Looks like it looked like a forced offload there from Pills. I'm not sure if it went to hand or maybe it was knocked by a Brothers player, but it's ended up in the hands of Nate Carroll and he's him and his twinkle toes has got through about three defenders. Very nice clean up from Nate Carroll. Another line out. The Tigers, deep in their own. Pills, he's well and truly outside the 22. A pressured box. Kennedy's coming through, but Carroll soaring through the air, but he gets it ripped off by big Seru Uru. And now the ball's been turned over. Tigers will eventually find Moen, who offloads it through to Toa. Pills, under a lot of pressure at the back of the breakdown today. Doesn't have nearly as much time as he's had in other games. Now Van Neck. On the left, Frampton through to Taikato Simpson. Simpson puts on the wheels. Manages to just slip the tackle of Bully and stay in the field of play. Asiata wears a very high pass for it. Pops through to the hands of Milosevic, who's driving away, driving his way through. Over the top, Carroll looking for the turnover, and he gets it. That's big from the winger. Nate Carroll with a massive play there. East, East, <laughs> there's the boys going off. East with some very nice offloads there. Getting down to about five metres out, and Nate Carroll from the blind wing has come across defending as he should, and he's um, 
great positioning in his defence, and he's got over the ball here. Got the boys out of jail. We see a bit of a questionable pass going there. Rishi Asiata, but Tom Milosevic cleaned up really well. And Carroll went straight in. That's just textbook. Pilfering position. He's done very well. Yeah. <laughs> and eventually turn around now. Brothers feeding their own line out just ahead of their own 22. Quick out to the back and Perez will clean up the tap back from Smith. Here goes Tarabay into space. Thank you. Acting half Smith fires it through. Inside ball back to Savellio, but it'll be knocked on. But another penalty from East. I'm not sure what it was at the moment. It looked like a his motion was a knockdown, so maybe I think Savilio maybe tried to pop it back to Paddy James and it's been knocked down. He's probably got a bit lucky there. Here we go, here's a replay. Inside ball went from Paddy. Alrighty, so we've seen there Nate Carroll chopping up as Nate Carroll does, but we want to take you down to the Gold Coast where we've got the two uni sides going hell for leather and they going back and forth with some serious ferocity. And the heavies have given that one up now. And in the throes of halftime, Bond looking to work their way out of their own half. I'm sure if anybody can score, it would be them. But Dylan Rose says, hammer this one into touch and let's just regroup and get through it. But, I mean, 21-14, Dallin. Uh, we were anticipating a close game. But I, I honestly wasn't necessarily anticipating a 21-14 halftime game. No, absolutely not. I think Bond have been the the form side of that game. They've come out absolutely all cylinders fine, a firing, and then, you know, leading 21 points to 14 to the half, they'll be absolutely over the moon with that. And then you can see down on that bottom left there, out at the kennel, the doggies against South. It looks like South is starting to apply the blowtorch a little bit to the dogs there, so they can certainly sniff a win. And we're only moments away in all four matches for halftime. Down in the bottom right, we can see Sunnybank versus the Eagles, and it looks like Rex Tapawai is going to go over and extend their lead. So that's a four tries to two game now in favour of the Dragons, and they are looking red hot. Now, going into halftime, we're going to kick it over for the final few minutes in our match of the round, and we'll leave you with Martin Lippiet to take you through all the action. And he got a bit of an injury here. Looks like Reese Van Neck is down. We're here at Jack Ross Oval, Crosby Park, home of the Brethren. And I think this is a site that I'm told in probably the coming 12 months it uh, might not exist, mate, because I know the big development's yeah. starting soon. Yeah, yeah, a, uh, a huge government grant has been uh, has been gifted. Awarded? To, yeah, yep. gifted, it's awarded, what you awarded, gifted. And Guys, they're going to have a shot. But the uh, yeah, brothers here are very fortunate. We've had the same same clubhouse, same showers. Um, I think the same crack files yeah. for the last 70 Why years. So uh, it's nice to see there will be a redevelopment. Uh, oh, I think they're hitting, they're hitting reset on about probably yeah. what is about five or six different developments over the last 40 or 50 yeah. years, which is it's exciting. Yeah, I think yeah, I think the whole right, thing is yeah. going to be a bit back from the field, which <laughs> which is probably going to be a bit nice. Yeah, and for pro probably a few more seats instead of sitting on the, the dirt mound there is at the moment. <laughs> uh, it's um, just under a minute. Yeah, it'll long be, as it'll the field's green, stuff. that's what we care about. Well. Yes, no, it's nice and green. We had a nice, uh, got re-turfed earlier oh, this year. It's Big operation. I remember seeing it was kind of COVID was a bit of a blessing because it gave the field a bit more time to get ready for the onslaught. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Pre-season was done down on the bottom oval and a little bit out at ACU University. Um, top oval was completely out of action. So they're hunting for the three. So they're taking the three. It is right in front. It is right in front. And um, surely Ryan Cypher will... Maybe adjust his radar. He did hit the post on that first one earlier in the half. I'm sure he'll send this one through. Cyphaloy right in front. Strikes. Yeah, that's, that's time, boys. And it's through. And that is half time. Brothers will get the final points of the first half. They're trailing three points to East Eight. It's a do or die match for both of these sides. The balance of our finals, which start next week, really come down, Mitch, to 
the winning and losing points, the bonus points. All righty, folks, so we can see there, halftime in our match of the round. Brothers down three points to eight to the visiting Tigers. But in the throes of halftime, out at the Kennel South, they took a quick tap. Billy Rutherford, high tempo footy. And it was a short ball from Prasad. Easy stuff there. And Henry Smith going through practically untouched, picking himself up a five-pointer. So South now up by three points going in to halftime. It looks like it's going to be the last play of the day. The Doggies looking to attack and then out of Hugh Courtney. Sunny Bank up 26 points to 14. So we're going to round out these halves and once they do, we're going to have a quick look at our live ladder and run through all the action from all four matches and see how things stand as we speak. And it looks like Chapo in that game. Norse versus Sunnybank sets up. Prendy to who gets that little offload away there to Reese Tarpanay. Hasn't he been an absolute fire? He certainly has, and I think he's off and upwards into some higher honours, that Reese Tarpanay. But that man again, Chapo, he's just the heart and soul of that club, and it's great to see him back in that colours. Mate, Chapo is an absolute superstar. We saw him last week just in his first game, essentially, all the season. Yeah. Picking himself up two tries, one of them a chip and chase from his own 22. Mate, he is an absolute gun. And he, as you said, he's the heart and soul out there at the nest. He certainly is. He's hungry. And it's great to see him back out there. He's just a footballer. Doesn't matter what position he plays, that man always shows up, turns up, and puts on an absolute performance. And the Magpies running that one into touch. So that's going to be half time across all four matches in our final round of the All Sports Physiotherapy Hospital Challenge Cup. We are... So close to finals football, you can taste it. And I am absolutely fizzing down. <laughs> I'm so G'd up for this. I mean, we, I mean, this is four games of footy right now where we've seen absolutely massive moments. We've seen some great, in, uh, great individual performances. We've seen some sides like Vaughn coming out of nowhere and taking that lead from the visiting Red Heavies. This has been exciting stuff. Yeah, it certainly has. And I think, again, yeah, it just shows how close this competition is. You've got scores all across the board there. 26-19 at Hugh Courtney Oval. 22-19 out there at the Kennel. 21-14 down south. And 8-3 at Brothers there. What an exciting finish this season. Mate, and 8-3. I mean, that that makes it sound like it's been a bit of a bludger, but it hasn't. They're two sides that have thrown absolutely everything at each other, but they just, their defense is just absolutely rabid. I mean, we've seen Nate Carroll do some individual stuff, which is absolutely ridiculous, but that covering defense we saw early on, deep inside their own red zone for about six or seven minutes, the Tigers held out brothers. And I mean, to keep them to three points with only a penalty right on half time is absolutely massive. Yeah, it certainly is. And I think brothers will take a lot of that going into that half, but We've got 40 minutes of football left across all four games, mate. It's very, very exciting. Oh, mate, it's so good. <laughs> but we'll go through all four matches. We may as well because obviously that dictates where our live ladder stands. So three points to eight. I want to get your opinion. Where do you think Matho is, is going to take the boys at half time, And then on the other side, Mooch for East. What do you think he's going to be saying to the troops? I think from brother's side, it'll be just about execution. You know, East have been getting off the line really well. Physically, they've been kind of belting brothers and using their defensive systems to really put the pressure back on them. Playing football down in East half, getting out of the half, not mucking around as much, and just playing more of finals football, which East are doing. And then, as you said, I mean, East, Mudge is probably going to say just very much keep going as you're going. They're, they're really taking a stranglehold of that match, and that's something we've seen them do all year. They actually dictate play incredibly well. And I think that's something that going into finals football is absolutely imperative. And then our second, essentially, match of the round, as we like to call it, 21 points to 14 down on the Gold Coast. I mean, we said it before, we'll say it again. We weren't necessarily anticipating a 21-14 scoreline in favour of Bond. No, we certainly not, but I'm not surprised, to be honest. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's a tough trek down there. Bond have got so much to play for out there. Obviously, with the finals berth at stake, and UQ, as you said, have rested a few guys. No Scott Gale, no Pat Murray. A few other bits and pieces there with Brad Twider not playing either. So, it's an exciting set of, or exciting second half there down the coast. And then 22-19, the Magpies over the Doggies at the Kennel. I mean, look, the Doggies have been the side this year that should have really been knocking on the finals door if they could have come away with a few wins here and there. But that's been the story of their year thus far. They get up for those big games. We saw them obviously knock off Jeeps on Ladies Day. They win those big games or they, they fight tooth and nail. Then there's a couple games early on in the season against North. They went down. It's 
it's a weird one for the doggies, and you'd have to think that they want to get the dub today to show that they are on the right path. Well, they certainly would. Uh, I think this massive second half, then 40 minutes of football to, to really put a nice finishing touch on this season. As you said, they've been there and thereabouts, but they just haven't been able to execute. That comes with a little bit of inexperience, but also comes with, I think, that group really gelling together nicely. And then 26-21, the Dragons over the Eagles. What we sort of anticipated was probably going to be a close game. I mean, we've seen Sunnybank this year. They've lost so many games either on the hood or in the back end of those second halves. They've been incredibly unlucky. They don't really have too much depth on their bench to really finish those games. So it'll be interesting to see how they round out this game against the Eagles, a side that can sort of attack from anywhere, but also, you know, haven't really found their feet either. No, you're 100% correct, and I think depth has played a large part in that Sunnybank side. You know what I mean? They're good for 60 to 65 minutes, then all of a sudden they get run over. I just hope that they keep their, their starting 15 on the park there and just let them ride the season out. Now we'll leave you with all the action here in our first match that's kicked off in to the second half in our final round of the All Sports Physiotherapy Hospital Challenge Cup going into Ballymore Finals next weekend. So we'll leave you with all the action of the students going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Bon Uni against the University of Queensland. Check out Zone Planning and Landscaping. They work extensively throughout Queensland and New South Wales, offering experience, expertise and innovation combined. We'd like to thank Bone for their support of Bond University Rugby on, in on. Season 2020. Don't talk to the Niners gun, do you? Now, whilst we're packing this scrum here between the two students, we'll run you through their road to Ballymore, starting with the boys from the GC. Not as sitting, not sitting as pretty as other, uh, any of the others, obviously sitting outside the top four, but they need to win by any margin, or they need to obtain two losing bonus points and brothers to lose to East. And it, uh, something that could happen. Oh, most certainly, mate. As you said, you can see by the scoreboard there, there's plenty of opportunities for those bonus points, but... Currently, they're sitting seven points clear with 39 minutes to go in this half. I think Bond have really kind of put themselves in the prime seat here to come away with the finals berth. And then we look at UQ. They've already secured a top two finish, sitting pretty compared to everyone else. They can claim the minor premiership just as long as East lose, brother. So we can understand why they have rested some players. You know, Scotty Gale got absolutely belted last week. He had more strapping tape than a horse at Flemington, as, as uh, Tommy Christie likes to say. But... Mate, he was in the absolute wars last week, so I'm sure he'll be um, really cherishing a little bit of time on the sidelines. Yeah, he certainly will. I think a lot of those boys will, will, will do well with, with the week off. As you said, they're in the top two. They've got, they've got nothing to lose there. They've got a second bite of the cherry. But it's an exciting time down there for this Bond University side. Now we'll kick it over to our match of the round out at Crosby Park, and we see the Tigers up eight points to three coming into the second half. We'll leave you with Martin Lippier. Kicking out of their own 22, getting their own line out on halfway. Even, yeah, even as, as mentioned before, going against the win, they're still having a crack at it, but it has ended up, it has ended up back at halfway, East Ball. Van Neck. Hits Moen, clean up the front. Oh, a fumble from Pills at the back. And one observer can say, uh, Eli Pills, a few more fumbles in this game than we're used to seeing from one of the leading halfbacks in the competition. Yeah, he's still still so dangerous. You can't you can't lay off him for a second. He's still so dangerous around the field. And, and as these big forwards get tired of the second half, he'll look to have a scoop and, and hit those corners. But yeah, he's, he's fumbled a few. Maybe a bit of pressure coming from the brothers' forwards. We talk about the forwards on both sides. Scrum has been a very even duel between both of these sides. I haven't seen any one team getting a majority of pushovers or victories. It's been very good on the scrum yeah, side of things. Yeah, yeah. No head on. No, no head on head, okay, guys? Seems to be a good little duel going on between Harry Hooper and Reese Van Neck on the far side. Mate, I'll, I will just stay out of scrum conversation at all. I have no idea what's going on. They said no head on head. I'd, I'd 
Oh, that's pretty straightforward. No head on head. Yeah, but surely they're not trying to do that. Like. <laughs> they are fun rollers, mate. <laughs> Mind games all up in the engine range. Tarabay. Throws it in. Sturdy scrum from both sides. Tarabay picks and Tarabay's goes on the left hand the side. Right. There's the chip. He's going to pull through. Kennedy. He's done well. Good net gain there from Tarabay. He really saw, and I think on the far side, that would have been um, Tom Milosevic. He's probably going to be a little bit annoyed he didn't shut that one down early. Yeah, I was smart from. Isaac, as as the scrum went in, Pills went around to the open side to help defend his um, help defend his open side. Tarabay's saw that as the uh, as the scrums rotated a bit, saw a bit of space, took a dart, and it's ended up ball down within ten minutes of the line. Good play. I do like how Tarabay's boots uh, match the headgear. Boot headgear and jersey all suiting. He's um, probably probably and the DTs I, and underneath he had, as he well. He had some probably. really loud pink shorts on before the game as well, so. Yes, sir. Great try for Max Dow. His second of the afternoon. An intercept against the run of play. And it is yo, yo, Ma, ladies and gentlemen. You saw down there on your bottom left of screen, Max Dowd picking himself up. His second try of the day. An intercept. We've spoken about him before and just how exciting he is. And we'll key up that replay and bring it to you because that is absolutely fantastic stuff from Max Dowd. Certainly is. He's probably been one of the form wings of the competition this year. And again, it's his second try for the game. But just putting his team now with a 14-point buffer out over this university side. Look, anyone anyone who knows anything about QPR football knows the Red Heavies can score from pretty much anywhere and you do not rest on your laurels. But anyone will take a 14-point lead seven minutes into the second half. That is for damn sure. Absolutely. Your tails are up, you're playing with the wind at your back, all of a sudden you're walking a bit tall, like you can complete control of the game down there. And it's great to see Bond University really putting their name up here to be in this final series. Come on, Bond, bring it home for old j Bor. I've been backing you in for so long now, I just want to see them play some finals football because they are, in my opinion, they have been for the better part of the last three seasons, the most exciting team in the competition. They score from anywhere, they get intercepts, they absolutely play brilliant high tempo footy and the last two seasons they should have been playing finals football if they didn't start slowly this year they came out of the blocks absolutely firing and i will give absolutely anything in the world to see them play finals football because i think they can cause some serious upsets yeah they certainly can and as you said the last couple of years they've come home with a wet tail and they've narrowly missed out on finals they're putting themselves in a prime position now to be really a part of that but the most exciting part about them is that real balance between their forwards and their backs. They score tries from anywhere. They can still win games without their set piece firing. And bring that into a final series, all of a sudden it really opens the competition up. And coming to a final series with Zane Nongor and Angus Blythe in the back pocket, I think you're going to go absolutely hell for leather. And you can see there on your bottom left of screen, it looks like the doggies have picked themselves up a five-pointer in the corner. And now they've wrestled back that lead off the Magpies and it's Whiteside finds Bombay Benji. The Prince of Persia breaks that last line of defence but he's dragged down just short. And then a simple pick and go at the back there. Now speak of the devil on the top right of the screen there you can see the heavies firing straight back against Bon Huni, picking themselves up a five-pointer. So huge stuff going on across all four matches in the final round here of the All Sports Physiotherapy Hospital Challenge Cup. And we'll queue up this replay and bring it to you because it's Will Roach, the feisty blonde flanker who is the beneficiary, backing up on the inside from 3GH. This kid right here, I mean, I've, I've spoken to Connor Maroney and, and some of the other guys there at uh, UQ, and they have big raps on him. They just say he's an absolute tackle machine. He is a fiery customer, and he is a kid who just will go all day. He certainly is, and obviously they've got an excellent 
you know, back row over there at, at UQ and for him to find his position in at seven and secure that for the year, he obviously fought pretty hard, but to be doing that at his age is very, very impressive. I mean, and look at their back row. They've got Connor Mitchell on the bench. They've got, they're resting Pat Mori today and in his place is Angus Scott Young and Sam Wallace came back last week. So, I mean, their back row, not only is it mobile and an absolute niggle fest at the breakdown, they're so mobile as well. They love to get around the park and link up through those transition lines as you saw there through Will Roach. Yeah, they certainly do. They pop up everywhere and that's another you know, deciding factor that has been or has allowed UQ to be so successful over these last couple of years is that integration between the forwards and the backs. Now we're going to kick it over to our match of the round and we'll let Martin Lippiets take you all the way through this scrum because we know for a fact this scrum battle is going to be absolutely red hot. You've got Hoopert, Fesler and Thibaut Maloney going toe-to-toe -to -toe with George Francis, Richie Asiata and Reese Van Nonek. This is going to be tasty. Yeah, no, you know, it doesn't really matter what club you're from. If you see someone from Queensland Premier Rugby Club land, you know, go through the ranks and do the hard work and and get their results like uh, making a Wallabies debut, everyone's really happy for him. Now, penalty there off the back of that scrum. The Tigers getting ascendancy and... Toa was looking for that just a little chip over the top side before he gets a clean spoil on it. So they'll bring it back for the penalty. And first scrum penalty we've seen in the second half. Hey, what if the penalty advantage wasn't here? Oh, well, it might have been on there. On your side, Not sure if he would have chipped it if there was no <laughs> penalty true, advantage. That's true. But he might have heard the, uh, got a little green light to try something with the advantage, but we've gone back and now East are going to be inside okay. their 22, attacking the ladies' day tents. It's always a good spot to score a try there, Marty. Even if you're the away team? Well, it depends how hard you want to try after the game. I guess you're in the second round of 50 years. Or... There you go. Van Neck. All eyes have been knowing that one's spoiled by Smith up high. It's regathered by Maloney, but it's been knocked on in the process. Thanks for your honesty. Buzzer out here. So no line outs set in concrete today. No, very um, set piece both scrum and line out. It's so competitive. Every line out, every scrum. A lot of spoiling going on as we, uh, as we spoke about before. Ben Moen, number one in the competition for line-out steals. Going into today, I think he's had maybe another today, one yeah, or two exactly. going in this game, but a huge impact he's had for this. Now we're going to kick it over to the kennel, and we can see here it's a five-pointer. Great stuff there. The young tight head prop, Francis Sulisiosi. He's been awesome this year. I mean, his scrummaging has started to really get much, much better throughout the year. We've seen... Early on in the season, a lot of youngsters being blooded there at the Magpies, and their set piece was a bit shaky, but they've really started to find their feet. I mean, some of the bigger sides, East and Jeeps, got some serious purchase against them, but we saw last week against North, so really putting some pressure on a, a very good front row in guys like Fitzy, Tonga Marfu, and Cody Blackhurst. Yeah, certainly right. I, I think this this forward pack that Souths have produced this year are, are real, or real stars in the future. They've got, they've got a lot of good quality talent out there and this year they're going to come away with some some great experience now we'll keep an eye on both these matches here we could see the Tigers attacking deep inside brothers territory and Sunnybank doing the same so you can expect Sunnybank to really put some pressure on here and we've just noticed as well that Bond University have actually picked themselves up another try. So extending that lead once again. We saw them put uh, a kick over just before to extend their lead from a penalty. Then straight off the kickoff, they bagged themselves a bit of meat. Again, Dallin, I know what I'm talking about. They score so <laughs> many points from inside their own half. They are the absolute guns at just picking up long-range tries. They just play such a brilliant high-tempo brand of footy. And they certainly do. They're absolute excitement machines. Every single one of their players, 1 through to 15, can do something extremely fancy, and it's paying dividends for them this year. 
So we'll queue up this replay for you now, and you can see it right here. UQ opt to go long with their kickoff too and drop that right on the chest of Rian Stowers. Oh, Bus, right off the right foot there. Goose steps Jordan Lenac, and he finds LD, the clean machine, who just pins the ears back and gasses Mac Greeley. No mean feat there, but my God, Bond played good footy. My God, they are good. They are such a sexy outfit. I absolutely froth the brand of footy they play. Absolutely, man. Off the kickoff as well. Stowers, Rian Stowers. Oh, man. He this year has I been love him to death. Sensational. He is an absolute gun. He reminds me of Nate Carroll because he doesn't just have that fleet foot. He actually has a great kicking game and he defends well. Like, he injects himself when he needs to. He's a game manager. Like, he's the sort of guy that can go on to bigger and better things. I absolutely froth Rian Stowers. Same, mate. As you said, he's not the biggest man on the field, but he has every single aspect that can produce a professional rugby player. And he's come through that Gold Coast system as well. He's come through the Gold Coast system. He's played a couple of seasons down in the lower grades. Got in a Guernsey this year. Oh my God. He has absolutely chopped up. So great to see Rian Stowers going hell for leather. But my God, 36 points to 21. Bond over the Red Heavies. That is a hell of a lead to have with 25 odd minutes to go but still plenty of footy to be played down on the Goldie and it's the students from UQ who are now trying to work their way up over that 10 metre line but we're going to kick it over to our main game, our match of the round as we see brothers pushing hard and attacking the Tigers try line Mowen's over the top of that Gets it once again. He's the tallest guy on the field, but he can get down to the knuckles on the grass in a blink of an eye. What do they say about the ants? They've got to go marching two by two. I think brothers are going to have to do that if they want to stop East stealing the ball break ten. Yeah, this is really a game where you can't go one out. You've got to have your primary support any time you're running it. And any time that you know, the boy, the setup, brothers' okay. boys have gone one out, East Haven can pay as they did just Now we've seen there just in our match of the round, Big Ben Moen has been an absolute superstar for the Tigers all year, former Wallaby skipper, and he has been a massive part of their Surge towards Ballymore, six tries, third in the competition, 15 turnovers. We just saw him bag one more there, and 29, 29 line-out wins and six steals, third and second respectively. I mean, look, there's, we know who Ben Mowen is. He's a former Wallaby skipper. We know what he can offer, but my God, he has just come into this competition and just shown just why he is Ben Mowen. Yeah, absolutely right. He is playing like he used to play for the Wallabies, you know what I mean? doesn't matter what level he goes to, he puts in 110%. 110%. You can see by those statistics, six tries, 15 turnovers, leading the competition. You know what I mean? He's been absolutely sensational for this team and provides a huge platform for these young guys to really benefit off. That right there, the platform he sets. I mean, he's at, he's the Queensland under-20s coach. He's obviously the academy coach taking over from Rob side. But on top of that as well, I mean, he's actually just imparting so much wisdom on his players, on his uh, his fellow players, you know, like guys like Reese Van Neck, you know, uh, he said on the Club Rugby uh, Collective podcast last week that he's just like, you have no idea how much better he makes you play. He just makes you feel that much better and he just imparts so much wisdom and it's one of those things we always say when you play against the best, you play your best. When you play with the best, you do the same and I think it's been absolutely massive for the Tigers this season in their surge to the finals. He brings a real sense of intensity to that game and to that club. Queensland's second fastest <laughs> record right there, Matty Fesla. <laughs> it's Smith. Really a first driving ball of this game. In 55 minutes, brothers driving forward, driving forward. They're close. Held up just short. Tarabay. Cypherloy. Inside ball to Carroll. Brothers picking and driving on the left side. Berry says it's short. On the line, gold. Tarabay. Looks to go himself, but they were waiting for him. Release gold. Brothers knocking on the front door, picking and driving, and they're in. Brothers tie it up. Eight points all. 
with a conversion to come, and I think it might have been Will Wilson getting across. Big try for Brothers. Was it Will Wilson? Still can't, can't really return. work out who that was, but it's a try to Brothers nonetheless. Well, this might will, have a better look This here. will remedy the situation. Might be Harry Hooper. Hooper was the last pick and drive in there. No, it's the next phase. No, no, we're about we're a while back. That was Tarabay's. So it comes, I think it's the next one or two after yeah, it here. Might be Will Wilson's dived over. He it has. is Will Wilson. Yeah. Fantastic effort off the bench. Will Wilson. What an impact. His brother might be watching. I'm showing with Fraser over across the ditch. Yeah. Hey boys, if you are watching, swing a, will hit the like button about. on the stream on Facebook to let us know. Slide good luck tomorrow as yeah, well. Slide into our DMs and uh, <laughs> yeah, good luck boys. Rip in tomorrow. Great stuff Wrong there, baby boys. Wilson picking up that five pointer that draws level with the Tigers. But in the meantime, we've seen an absolute perler. This is champagne rugby here from Nick Chapman. Check this out. Puts it on the toe. Thought it was a bit of a nothing kick. Tom Lucas lets it bounce. And Chapo, as he does, just week comes in, out of nowhere. Week out. Absolutely carving up for this North Side. He is the man. And then down on the Gold Coast, Zane Nongor got the hands away, finds Nicky T. Oh! And they almost, almost bagged this one here. It looked like coming out of nowhere. Angus Blythe gets it back to Boardman. And then sneaking in comes Jasper Mellish, who gets bundled into touch. So exciting stuff all round. But now we're going to go to the live ladder because with that try, we have ourselves a top four that doesn't involve Chiefs Rugby Club. That is crazy to think of. But anything can happen in the final round of All Sports Physiotherapy Hospital Challenge Cup. But as it stands, we see Uni on top. On 32 points, East and Bond both on 31, and Brothers sneaking in on 29 points with a draw. It's exciting! Oh isn't my it? god! <laughs> There'll be some nervous boys over there at the Chiefs Club, obviously just sitting down and not having any control of what's happening in front of them. But both Bond and Brothers are doing everything they possibly can to put themselves in front of be part of this final series. And if the scores remain as they are, just a little. Uh, PSA, if anybody is at the Spanish Garden at the Caco, do give Dan Gorman and John O'Ellis a wide berth because you don't want to be anywhere near those two if the Gallopers aren't playing finals football this year. I can assure you of that. But now we're going to run through South, picking themselves up a little bit of meat in the corner. And it's all through their forwards. Their forwards are really getting a lot of purchase in the tight stuff. Something the Doggies have really pung their hat on this year is the strength of their forwards, but looks like the young South Outfit is really taking it to him now out of Hugh Courtney. It's the Eagles' chance now to try to wrestle back this lead from the Dragons, but they've done brilliantly over the ball there, and it's Tom Lucas, mate. Tom Lucas, Dallin. Well, look, we all know how bloody good he is. He's a former Aussie Sevens representative, but since making the transitions to 15s last year, during what is a rebuilding structure uh, uh, phase for their entire club, he has been an absolute superstar for them. Yeah, he certainly has. You know, what I mean, he, he he is the heart and soul of that side, very much like young Nick Chapman is over here at Norse. But he's one of those guys who, as we've seen before, plays at the next level. But I think in this 15 game, 15s game, can, can certainly play at the next level as well. 100%. His game management is absolutely brilliant, and even in a losing side, a lot of the time he's the best player on the park because. As you said, a lot like Chapo, he's the heart and soul of that side. I mean, I touched on it before, and it's one of the pitfalls, unfortunately, for Sunnybank, having lost a lot of players and being in a rebuilding uh, phase for their entire club. They don't have much depth. They've had to bring back guys like they're, they're fortunate that, that Digby's being able to come back. Rex Tapwise is looking bigger and faster than he always has. Josh Afu's come back. Like They're lucky that they've had those guys, because unfortunately for them, and I, I mean, I hate to say it, but they are... They are lacking a lot of uh, punch from the from the bench. Yeah, they certainly are. I think it just comes down to depth. Obviously, it's, it's a rebuilding couple of years for those guys out at Sunnybank, and they've got 15 really good quality Premier Grade players. But below that, they're, they're, there's, there's not a lot. So now, 
We might just keep an eye on this game down on the Gold Coast. We'll go to what is essentially our second match of the round between the students at the Shark Tank. And we saw LD Liam Dillon showing a clean set of heels but getting hair down pretty easily. So now the, sh the heavies having to work their way out of their own 22, but a knock on there in contact from Bond. So exciting stuff and Bond. We know they just love attacking, but I love to see that they aren't putting the cue in the rack in the slightest. They're still looking to play some high-tempo footy. And speaking of high-tempo footy, Jock Campbell. <laughs> Mate, literally from his own try line. An absolute slow motion. There's plenty of time. And now we're going to kick it over to the kennel where the doggies have just picked themselves up a little bit of meat. And there's their scrum putting some serious pressure on. Skelton finds Sarovi, and all too easy there for Mo Sarovi. But South still with a commanding lead out there at the kennel. The doggies looking a little bit shaky. 36 points to 29 with a kick to come. But if you keep an eye on the left hand side there, that scrum, big Mikey Palmer's come on. I'd say for Harry Hoopert with T-Bone going to loose head side, his preferred side. But he's still putting some serious pressure on. Oh, Hayes. He's such a brilliant line runner, is Landon Hayes. Now we'll kick it over to the Gold Coast because we can see Bond here are looking to set up a rolling wall. They've gotten plenty of purchase out of that. We'll keep it on the dual screen actually so we can see what's happening because the Tigers are looking bloody good here going deep inside the kill zone against Brothers. But on the Gold Coast, it looks like it's gone back inside. Rian Stowers! Yummy stuff there, Rian Stowers. Don't you love to see it? This, look, obviously they're taking a drop goal as well, so they're just looking to try and rack up as many points as possible. This is just, oh, this is just intense coming out from the Goldie Boys. They are stamping their authority on this competition. But this is what they needed to do. We saw them last week, obviously, get smashed by Chiefs, but they needed to come out and they needed to say, we are playing finals football, and to do so, they need to come out and do this. I think they took a quick shot because they didn't want... Uh, I think it's Aaron Pook, the referee, to confirm with his touchings. <laughs> that ball was a mile That was forward. only about a metre and a half <laughs> forward. But in our main game now, we'll kick it over to the main game. We'll let Martin Lippiak call the Tigers. Eight points apiece with the Brethren. With ball in hand, trying to pick themselves up a lead here. They want to come away with some points here. They need to break this deadlock. 15 minutes remaining. Advantage to the Tigers. Good breakdown pressure from Brothers will bring up the penalty. Shot, guys. And they're going to get for the three, and I think it shows a lot of respect to your adversary when you're right on the front doorstep and you'll take the three over seven. Yeah, you definitely have to throw, throw that one over, being right in front eight or 15 minutes to go. Unfortunately, Brothers letting a few, letting their discipline down there. As mentioned before, concede the least amount of the penalties this uh, this competition Brothers have this year. However, discipline letting them down there. You know, and putting that in perspective, going into today's game, Brothers had only given away uh, 68. I think behind UQ. So yeah, 68 penalties. They are only just narrowly a little bit behind UQ. But then East, they've given away 83, which is you know, around the middle of the pack. But today, it's been a pretty even affair yeah, for both sides. Everyone's giving away just as much as the other. Now Pills. Help the Tigers retake the lead. Oh, no. He has missed from point blank. Pressure cooker. Well, we've seen there Eli Pills, who's been shooting the lights out all year, misses that one. And unfortunately for Jeeps, that does put them in a precarious position 
Obviously, having to buy in the final round sucks, let alone when you're third and you've got two teams only a couple of points <laughs> behind you. But this is how it looks for their road to Ballymore. Bon Uni lose to UQ. Brothers lose to East by more than 13. Brothers don't obtain two losing bonus points versus the Tigers, or East lose to Brothers by 21 or more. Essentially, nothing is in their control. And if we go over to the live ladder now, we'll be able to see that it has just completely changed the ball game because there is just so much movement. And with that missed kick, it keeps Jeeps out of the top four as it stands. And that is scary stuff for the Gallagher's. It certainly is, and it's not by much. It's not by much at all. And so you've got a lot of nervous Jeeps boys, as I said, sitting out at the creek or wherever they're sitting in Brisbane currently. But it's just an exciting day of football. Mate, it is exciting stuff. And speaking of exciting stuff, we've got ourselves another try down on the Gold Coast. This time it's to the heavies. So Dylan Rowe losing that one in contact there. And then Uni doing what Uni do best. Jock Campbell back inside. And then it's 3GH in third grade. Hooker Sammy Edwards streaking down that far touch line. Look, clawed back that lead a little bit. 43 points to 28. So they nailed the kick, which they needed to do. But it still means that, that ladder sees them at the top of the ladder with East drawn, obviously, with Brothers. Seeing the brothers sneaking in and bond in third place. I mean, there is just so much going on at the moment. And, I mean, look at the top right of the screen there. You can see plenty of breaks going out. Down the bottom left, the Magpies looking to extend their lead as well. And then the Tigers as well looking to set a rolling mall, doing what Tigers do best. They love that tough, hard grafting stuff. But they've given away a penalty there. So there is just so much going on here. And Dallin, I can see you giving little fist pumps, mate. <laughs> you are absolutely fizzing for it. Absolutely. What a day of rugby we've had so far. Every single game we've still got is edge on your seat stuff. 36-31 over at South there. Oh, over at West. South over West. 33 points to 28. Sunnybank over North. 43 points to 28. You know, Bond over UQ. And we're all locked up here at Crosby Park with end-to-end -end rugby. Defence is playing a huge game here in this East First Brothers game. I'm not going to lie. I'm sweating so hard <laughs> over here. Right? This is amazing stuff. I mean, look, I sweat at the best of times, but this is just getting me super G'd up. It's absolutely fantastic football all around. But as it stands, as we said, scores remain the same. University finished with the minor premiership. East and Bond in two and three on 31 points on the ladder. And then it's the Brethren on 29 points sneaking into the finals with the gallopers missing out so exciting stuff plenty of footy still to be played about 10 to 15 minutes across all four games and there is so much going on at the moment and look at bond up there on the top right liam dillon putting the box kick in and it was mitch third herring after that one i love the fact that despite the fact they're up 43 points to 28 they aren't putting the queue in the rack. A lot of the team, a lot of teams would park the bus, back their defence, and make sure that they just get that dub. They want to smash these blokes. They want to fire a big old warning shot across the bow and say it's taken us so long to get there, but if we make finals, we are coming hell for leather. Yeah, they certainly are. They're really stamping their authority on this game and this competition with just over eight minutes to go down there. You'd think with Bond University only five metres out from the university line. I mean, they might have also just secured themselves a final berth. Oh, mamma mia. <laughs> I'm frothing. This would be absolutely fantastic. We've seen, obviously, not since the breakers were in the competition, has a Gold, so Gold Coast side been in the QPR final. So coming into the competition in 2013, I believe, Bond taking the place of the Gold Coast breakers. There's been a lot of dark times down there on the GC, but they've started to recruit well. They're setting up a brilliant program down there. We've seen their sevens program has been red hot for several years now, and it's starting to bear some serious fruit in the 15s game as well. And Mac really having to step his way off his own try line there. And Dylan Rowe is still going hell for leather out there. But there it is. Tom Milosevic picking up a five-pointer. That changes everything. Now let's actually kick it to the main game as Martin Lippier takes us through this five-pointer from the count. Tom Milosevic. Opened up. A little bit of a counter-attack opportunity there for East. And they swung the ball. They swung the ball to the opposite channel from where they were. And, uh, and found a little bit of space. Once again, their offload game very strong. And uh, Tom Milosevic. 
Well, it was Finished really, it, it was really Seruru, wasn't he? Getting into that contact, sucked up two, three defenders. Then he manages to get that very cheeky offload oh, away. Well, thank you. We see them plowing through here. Uru gets it to Pills once more to Milosevic, and just tired, tight five forwards hanging around. They weren't going to get onto the back of Milo. So a big try here and a conversion to come right in front. This game will push back out to potentially another converted try. With just over eight minutes remaining. Unbelievable. In for a close. hell of a finish here. Very close. Pills doesn't miss it. Hammers it into the ladies' day crowd here. So there we have it, Eli Pills adding the extras to that Tom Milosevic try. Now, let's just run through some of the stats we've got for Eli Pills. Top of the table when it comes to points scored this season. 90 points in only nine games is absolutely massive because this hasn't been updated for today. Five tries, 22 conversions, seven penalty goals, 29 from 38 off the boot. He is as cool as a cucumber as Eli Pills, Dallin. He certainly is. He stood up in a few games this year to, to, to knock the winning goal over. And exceptional, I think, this year has been his kicking game. Not just goal kicking, but across the park. He's led this team ar around the park really, really well. And kept a player like Phoenix Hunt, who you and I both know, Jay Ball, yeah. is an exceptional talent in himself. And uh, Phoenix Hunt last year was going tit for tat with uh, Eli Pills in regards to the starting role. But down on the Goldie now. Look at this. That is just rude. Take your medicine. UQ, Mitch Third just playing games with them down there in the Goldie. They are absolutely chopping up. That is a sign of a team that is incredibly confident. It certainly is. And as you said, they're just putting them to the sword. They're going to come away with 50 points here today. Oh, mate, that is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. Now we can see it looks like the Doggies down five points with about 12 minutes to go putting some pressure on at scrum time to try to claw back this lead from the Magpies. And then in our main game, our match of the round up at the top left there, we saw the brothers line out, not sticking their throws. So they've been their own worst enemy on some crucial occasions today, but they're still in a very good position. They just need to get that draw as it stands with Bond University looking like they're going to absolutely spank the heavies down on the Goldie with only a few minutes to go. If they can get back a converted try, they play finals football. So we're going to be sitting here and waiting with bated breath and some spicy armpits, that's for sure, as we see all four matches round up here in our final round of All Sports Physiotherapy Hospital Challenge Cup for 2020. And Mikey Palmer in plenty of space there. Mikey Palmer's been a very good inclusion to this brother's forward pack. I mean, I, I remember I was speaking to you early on this season, Dallin, saying, I mean, he's a big unit. What's his fitness like? But he tends to get around really well, doesn't he? Yeah, he certainly does. He's played, obviously, a fair bit of Mitre 10 over there. And it's just fitness is the biggest thing for him. But as this season's gone on, his fitness has got better and better and better. And, better, and he's become a large part of this brother's side. And there's plenty of action going on. Let's kick it over to our match of the round. And we'll let Martin Lippiot bring you all the action from Crosby Park as the brethren are looking to book themselves a spot in the finals. still got it. I don't think Ryan Smith can pick the ball up while he's on the ground. But we're going back for a penalty. Time's off and I think there might be a warning coming. That one's for the head. Yeah. They didn't need to continue with it. But it's the amount of penalties given away in this area of the park. Another penalty down here. It's going to be a yellow card. Talk to the guys. There we go. And you see, that's really big. Even right now with the way the scores are, converted try is going to level it up. And even that's a draw, and we're going to have to see something pretty existential for it to not award a bonus point either way right now. So how that factors into the grand scheme of things, I'm not sure. Pick and go, they put it into the hands of Palmer. Tarabat, through to Smith, who's had a big 75 minutes so far. Wilson. Perez, buys it off through to Savelio, and he's short. Tarabat, realigning the troops left and right. He's got pods of forwards to his right, back spread to his left. 
Cypheloy looks to go himself. Cypheloy's in! Rowan Cypheloy! He knows he's got to move quick here, so he's got to get out, get this conversion, try and tie it up, and then they've got to get back, and they've got to find some more points. Wow, we What a finish, what a finish. The uh, Savelio getting so close here, but made a great call to place the ball back, and Rowan knew there was space out wide. Tarabay pulling the trigger at the perfect time, and a little bit of uh, a little bit of dancing feet for Rowan out oh, wide, no, found himself over the line. That's a strong carry and, from and the, the first strength. receiver. Yeah. Three boys. First receiver number ten. That's a strong carry. Yeah. It's not squatting two hundred for nothing. I got this three. Boy. Just a touch over. He is a strong, strong man. Small in stature, but. Oh sure. Okay, is that why the boy is strong. Oh, I should always assume with how hard he can hit yeah, a ball. Okay. He must have yeah, hamstrings three minutes just like now. You know, steel cables. <laughs> not uh, not as not as great as Dave with the boot here, Rowan Cyphalo, but oh, a pretty Bills. important one. Pretty important Only one second here. try of the season. Usually just enough to get off the nudie run and then he just disperses the rest. Cyphalo to tie it all up. 78th minute. Cyphalo. Oh. Just pushes it to the right. And we'll get a quick points update on how this falls if the scores don't change right now. Eastern Uni tied in first. Bond and Jeep. So, brothers, they've got to do something in the next two minutes. Brothers have got to find points in the next two minutes. A penalty, a try, they've just got to find it. What a finish. What a finish. <laughs> Do you, uh, do you go possession or do you go territory? I'm not a coach. I don't know. Alrighty, folks. We're just going to leave you all with the live stream of all four matches. The quad screen up for the final few minutes as we bring you all the action of the final round. There's plenty going on. So tune in and let's see what happens. Carabay fights Palmer. Tigers, will they commit to try and find a turnover? James passes it through. Right. Players are on the top of that. Tarabay looks, finds Smith. Smith runs towards his support. Wilson's there. A few Thank bodies you, from the Tigers caught in the Nelson. Here's Dobbins. Dobbins goes through over the top. This could be dangerous. The Tigers are looking. He's off his feet. And a penalty goes towards the Tigers with 60 seconds remaining. That is massive. From Tom Milosevic. 50. 50, 50 seconds, seconds remaining on this clock. Uh, 50 seconds. I need a decision though, Ben. No, that's right. What do you want to do? Okay, we'll go for touch. Okay. Right. You get a kick for touch. Let's go. Which will probably be the last be, yeah. play of this match. And as it stands right now, unless something cataclysmic we happens down the seconds. M1. We just hold it. We've got a quick score update on what's happening down the way. East really taking their time here. Now down the seconds. Bond are up 48 points to 28 against UQ down the M1. So Bond have this really put the numbers now, on. Seconds. This is going to fall down to this line out. This is potentially season ending for Brothers if they can't yep. steal this line out and find three points at the other end of the field. It'll be the end of 2020. Line out. Taken smooth by Moen. That ball's at the back. A wall of blue and yellow to seal it off. Pills. All the time in the world. Kicks it into touch. And that is full time. And the Tigers will be tied at the top of this table with UQ. Falling to secondary points, who is our minor premier? I'm not sure, but as it stands, and as far as we know, that will be the end of the season for brothers. Mitch Felsman, that was a massive 80 minutes. What a what a hard blow, but what a game on uh, we had today. The physicality of it, there was, um, you know, 
the talent out wide to things like Otto Simpson at his feet, Nate Carroll having many big plays. Um, but that defensive wall from both teams was so impressive all day. Um, it forced errors in halfbacks and kicking games that we they haven't usually seen all yeah, season. Yeah, exactly. So they threw each other off. They, it was a great battle. Um, congratulations to East getting up. All righty, ladies and gentlemen, how about it? I know we just uh, we needed to give Dalen a couple minutes before he uh, <laughs> threw himself through a plate glass window. Unfortunately for his boys, they have been bundled out of finals contention with that loss to the Tigers, but it was a hell of a game, and we've seen down in the Goldie, the Bond University side, absolutely doing in the Red Heavies, but we thought we're going to bring you all the action between Norse and Sunnybank, 33 points apiece. As we saw Chapo with a kick to win it in the end there, unable to do so. So we haven't had a draw all season, and we could have our first right here between Norse and Sunnybank, two sides who we said down. Despite not really being in contention for any movement on the ladder, we're fizzing and fighting for a win. Imagine coming away with a draw. It'd be like kissing your oh, sister. Oh, it'd be horrible, wouldn't it? It'd be a terrible way to finish the year. But in saying that, across the board, mate, we've had four fantastic games of rugby. But you just hope we get a result in this game in Sunday night West Norse. Oh, who are you backing? I'm backing Norse to come away here with a win. I reckon the Dragons might do it. I just want the Dragons <laughs> to do it. Look, I know. Look, I know. I give the Dragons a bit of shtick. Look, I grew up in Logan, and we uh, we were a bit of a, a development club, I guess you could say, for the Dragons. But when the Dragons are healthy, club rugby is healthy. So I'd just love to see them bag another dub this season. That's for sure. Yeah, you certainly would, and you're 100 percent correct. They've got a huge opportunity out at all oh, right now, 60 meters out from North Line, to launch an attack and to finish this game off. And they've still got plenty of firepower in that back line. Rex Tapawai, Digby Iwani, Tom Lucas. Mate, they are stacked to the gills with some absolute game breakers. So if anyone can score from 60-odd out, you have to say it's the Sunnybank Dragons. But out at the kennel as well. Oh, we saw Jez Skelton last week absolutely delete BJ Oates in midfield. And you could see him looking to do the same again there at the kennel. Didn't stick that one. But two-point win on the offering here for the Doggies if the scores remain the same. And I'm sure the club will be going off like a frog in a sock if they do so. Now a penalty out there at Hugh Courtney. The Dragons with an opportunity to put this one into the corner and chew up a bit, few metres. But Tom Lucas goes quick. Here comes the seven specialist. Good eyes up footy there from Tommy Lucas and McNamara. Finds Afu. No, that's Marcy Ganita, sorry. Great to see Marcy Ganita back. Lucas McNamara breaks that first tackle. About 10 metres out from the Eagles line now. And penalty advantage. What do you reckon, Dow? Put it in the corner. I think you have to. I think, yeah. Put it in the corner, have a crack, and, and try and maul this, yeah, maul this ball over. Oh, no, it was Chapo. Oh, king of the north. <laughs> oh, no. Please, please don't let it be Chapo that gave up that penalty that wins it for the Dragons. Oh, look, as I said, I'd love to see the Dragons win, but I'd hate to see it come on the back of Chapo. Oh, it's breaking a little heart. But out at the kennel, Skyfleet Stadium. That's a penalty every day of the week. Literally just <laughs> hit and went straight down. So South now with an opportunity. I wonder if they maybe have a dig from 50 out. No, they're looking to put this one into the corner. Yeah, and it looks like out of Hugh Courtney as Tom Lucas is looking to step up for a shot at goal. If he buries this, those Dragons are going to go <laughs> absolutely burko. Putting the team on his back. Oh, mate, he's pretty much done it for the better part of 18 months now since coming back over for the 15-man game. But my God, this is... 
pressure situation if ever we've seen one. And Lucas looks like he strikes it well, and he's nailed it. <laughs> Tommy Lucas kicks the Dragons to a famous victory over the Eagles. 36 points to 33 on Norse Ladies Day. Unfortunately, it was Chapo's penalty that gave Tommy Lucas the opportunity to bury them, and he's done just that. So huge win there for the Dragons, and great stuff for them to be able to bag another dub in the back end of the season. Just deserves for a side that has fought tooth and nail all season. They've been very unlucky on occasion, and great to see the Dragons coming away with another dub. Don't you just love to see that, though? Putting his team on his back, stepping up to the mark, and it's not an easy kick from his wrong side. They're putting the ball straight between the sticks. And now out to the kennel. Final play of the day. And it's the Magpies with the feed. You can expect the doggies to put on a serious shunt. But the Magpies do well. Hands free. Here comes Sam Henna. Sam Henna dragged down from behind. Just a metre or so short, but there's a penalty advantage. And the Magpies. Just millimetres away. They are pushing for a famous victory. A young Magpies side looking to bring down the Doggies on their home track. The Doggies staunchly defending this one. Here come the Magpies, inch by inch, and there it is, try time! The Magpies! <laughs> and don't they love it? The Doggies, dejected, heads down, and that is a famous victory for the Magpies. A little bit of DJ Otzi in the stands there at Skyfleet Stadium. So, Magpies, a young side. You said at the start of the season, Dale, they were going to cause some headaches. We saw them pick up that dub when no points were offering against the Brethren early on. And they sort of fell away, but Todd Demers, credit to him and the boys, he was able to get them up for the back end of the season. Yeah, he certainly was. They've been there and thereabouts on a few occasions this year, but... I think it's just nice to see these boys or see Todd stick with these boys for, for, for the, throughout the year. I mean, they're going to be a lot better for it next year. In the next couple of years, it's going to be a really, really good quality for their great side. Oh, yeah, we saw last year. We know the story. They picked up both the Colts 1 and Colts 2 Premiership, coached by Todd Demers. No mean feat. I mean, to be able to have a, two Colts sides come away with the dub is absolutely massive. And they add the extras there. And you can see just how much it means to the young Magpies side as they stream onto Skyfleet Stadium as they bury the Doggies 43 points to 38. Well, there we have it, folks. We've got the final round of the Hospital Challenge Cup in the books. Now, let's go to the live ladder and see how it stands. And there it is right there on top of the table. The East Tigers have come away with the minor premiership. Equal competition points with UQ, but a better points advantage. And then in third spot, our boys, Dallin, the Bond University Bull Sharks coming away. 31 points to round out the season, 31 competition points. And then Jeeps, I said it, I was surprised. I was blown away at the fact that there could have been two sides with three losses this season playing finals football. But they've done it. They had the buy in the final round and they've just snuck in to get that fourth spot. And your boys, brothers, one point outside the top four, you must be gutted, mate. Yeah, absolutely. I think for brothers, they'll be absolutely going. It'll be a tough time for them over the next couple of days. But I think the real match of the round today was that bond against University. They were absolutely sensational. Really stamped their authority on this competition and have come away with, you know, five points to put themselves well and truly entrenched in this top four. That's it. They've picked up a five-point win. That's something that is absolutely massive to go into finals with. We saw them two years ago 
They went on like an eight and, uh, an eight and one run and just missed out on finals. They had guys like Ty Ford and Harry Nusafora in absolutely red hot form last year. They started zero and six and did the same, picking up only one loss in the back end of the season, but just missing out on finals. But they've done it. Bond University, for the first time in their history, is playing finals football at Ballymore, and I could not be any more excited for it because they are a danger side when it comes to uh, finals football. They are the most exciting team in the competition. They've shown that they can rack up points. They've just dusted the side that was sitting pretty on top of the table by 20 points. They are one to look out for. But I think that major semi-final, East versus Uni, mate, what that is going to be an absolute <laughs> bloodbath. You can expect to see the Tigers really look to win that breakdown battle, which is going to be massive. You've got Milosevic, Gunn, Blomfield and Moen and Uru that are just going to be hounding that pill. But then you've got Roach, Connor Mitchell off the bench, Sam Wallace, Pat Murray, Angus Scott Young. That is going to be absolutely massive. It's going to be a cracking final series, mate. And even that game, Bond versus Jeeps, he's got a super strong GPS side with some reinforcements coming in through at the right time. But I really like what Bond University is doing down there today. They're absolutely ex- ex- exceptional. Well, what are you packing then? Obviously, we've, so minor semi-final next week, Bond versus Jeeps. You've got a side that got smashed by Jeeps no less than a week or so ago, but they're going to be backing up. Obviously got some reinforcements in uh, Dylan Rowan Co, Angus Blythe, but obviously so do Jeeps. Who are you picking? Do you think it's going to be the scrum dominance of Jeeps that's going to get, take them home or that high-tempo, exciting footy that Bond's going to win it? It's really hard to go against the GPS side, but that's, you know, set piece and that strength. And finals experience. And finals can't experience. can't discount that. You know what I mean? They've won in the last couple of years. They've always been over the last couple of years. So it's going to be a really tight one, mate, but I think... You know, with that set piece on, that's a potential could be generous. And what about the major semi final? I mean, we just sort of wax lyrical about it. That breakdown battle is going to be absolutely massive, but we can't discount the attacking weapons. You're going to see Matt Greeley and Jock Campbell going toe to toe with guys like Dilla Taikato Simpson and Adam Toa. That's going to be absolutely massive. How are you picking that one? I've said it from the start of the year. I think it's East year. I think East is going to come out. They've got a supremely balanced forward pack, they've got a really balanced back line. Aiden Toa, Ben Mullen, that experience that both those guys have brought to this side this year. You know, with Mudge and Mark Bartholomew and the coaching staff over there, I think they'll go through. Well, there you have it, folks. We're picking it. Bond University, I think, is going to get up over Jeeps. You think Jeeps is going to get up over Bond? And then I, I am with you on that one. I think East Tigers are going to come away with the butter confection and go straight through the, to the granny on November 1st. But ladies and gentlemen... Thank you very much for joining us at the QPR Clubhouse. Dallin, thanks very much for joining us as well, mate. Always a pleasure, mate. It's been a privilege to bring all the action for you in the final round of the All Sports Physiotherapy Hospital Challenge Cup. Be sure to tune in next week as we bring you all the action of the major and minor semi-final live from Ballymore. But to round out our broadcast, we're going to bring you all the tries from round 11 action today in QPR footy. Good night.